Recording in progress. Hello and welcome to the select board meeting on Tuesday, August 20th, 2024, and the time is 6.01 p.m. I'd like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, next up is uh, citizens' input. <coughs> oh, uh, and uh, Joe Simone, our other selectman, is on Zoom. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Great. <coughs> uh, good evening, board members. My name is Roy Tilsley from Bernstein Shore. I know Mr. Marshan from, is it the ZBA or the planning board? I can't, or maybe both. Uh, I haven't met the rest of you, but it's nice to see you here today. I'm here tonight on behalf of 125 Development Corporation and the uh, Phase Two project over at Puzzle Lane. Uh, I'm an attorney representing them. I work in Bernstein Shore in Manchester. Uh, my client has asked me to come tonight and to work with him to try to get that project uh, back on track in terms of uh, getting work moving forward, but also making sure that the town is on board with um, what we're trying to do. Um, in doing that, I've met with our engineer. Uh, he will be submitting the mylar for the project to the planning board, I think in the next day or two, certainly by the end of the week. Uh, that will hopefully allow the conditional approval to uh, be finalized. Uh, we are also waiting on response from the planning board on the bond. About two weeks ago, Enterprise Bank uh, sent some bond language, some revisions to the chair, and they've been waiting for that response. So I'm hoping that that response is close once we get you the plan and hopefully you guys can respond or the town can respond on the bond language, we will then be in a position to uh, make the approval final and move forward at that particular point once we file the plan. Um, one of the things that I've spoken to my client about and I've asked him to keep me involved as we move forward with the town because I know there's been a lot of noise over this project, so to speak, uh, it would be really helpful uh, if I had a contact at the town that I could deal with uh, when issues come up. I don't know if that's Mr. O'Mara. I don't know if that's somebody else. I, I've been in front of you folks a hundred times on the zoning board. Uh, often in towns where there isn't a dedicated planner on staff, you kind of get these situations where people are wearing a lot of hats. It's never really clear who to talk to. So. Certainly from my client's perspective, he's asked me to carry the ball for his team moving forward to communicate with the town. If the town could designate someone that I could communicate with, that might help again to keep the, the tone down and try to get the project to move forward. So hopefully we think by this time next week, the plan will be final, recorded, and phase two will be good to um, hopefully in the town's eyes. Um, so I thank you for your attention. I'm not used to only having about a minute, so. <laughs> if I, if yep. I may, the rule of thumb is mm -hmm. that all information and paperwork, and I know that they're aware of it for the planning board, mm -hmm. should be and must be submitted by the Thursday prior to the meeting. Right. So that all that information can be given out to the planning board members so mm -hmm. that they can digest the information and come to the meeting aware of what's going on <coughs> and not have it thrust upon them at the last minute. Sure, understood, and that's okay. helpful to know. Okay, yep. thank you. Councilor, do you have a card? I don't. I can, can I email you in the morning? Why don't you come over there and talk okay. to Robin? Great, right. thank you both. I thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, sure, yeah. Thank you. Uh, anybody else for citizens input? Okay. Moving on, Sam, you got here just in time. Mm -hmm. You got here just in time. You're up. You're up, buddy. Right there. <laughs> so, um, okay. Well, thanks for having me. Sorry uh, I had to walk in on you like this. Perfect Anyways. timing, Sam. So, Sam Zanini, a building inspector. Um, just wanted to. A year ago, just over a year ago, we did um, 
you asked me to come to you to redo permit the permit fee schedule uh, just j last last June June of 2023 um, and in that we left out a piece that was probably important in the town administrator and I talked about it like a month later he said hey um, what do you do for after the fact permits in, in town and I said and we didn't really have a policy um, so you know I am looking to basically I, I gave you uh, a couple of code sections building code sections ones from the IRC the international residential code we currently are on the 2018 um, residential code and the um, 2000 IBC the international building code for commercial buildings um, we will be going to the newest edition uh, shortly there's a six-month grace period so we probably won't be on that till uh, the beginning of next year but in the in section one it allows us like a lot of times we have uh, residential properties commercial properties mostly residential properties where um, people do they do finished work in their house they might put in an apartment with without the benefit of permits um, they might put on a deck whatever, whatever it is it, it's very common in residential um, applications less common in commercial but it does happen and so uh, what happens is they go to sell the house the bank does their research they come to town hall they start researching files and then it turns up that there's no there were no permits for the work and then they'll come in after the fact a lot of times and try to get permits um, so for whatever reason some people they they forget they need permits some people don't really n understand others know and they just you know they might try to they may try to just do it and see what happens in the end so the co the building code uh, the residential code the IRC and the IBC that the state has adopted and the town has, has adopted allows the town to um, when 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 it's been determined that uh, work was done without the benefit of permit it allows the town to uh, adopt a policy to um, to uh, charge fees uh, as a penalty for, for, for doing so so uh, a lot of towns do adopt this and I am proposing I, I wrote up I drafted a little you should have it a little uh, thing that's that um, proposed language to add to current the current fee schedule so I'd like to add this to the current fee schedule it's it's not a lot of money but it might be a little bit of a deterrent and it might help the town recover and in, in these cases like we end up putting a lot more administrative time into something where we've discovered somebody's finished their basement or or something like that where we it costs us more administrative time and this will help recover some of those small costs it's 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 not a lot of money but I'll read it I'll read it to you it says a uh, work commencing before permit issuance see the IBC section 109.4 the IRC section R108.7 and it just says any person I put corporation in there that I was I use that word a lot when I used to work for the state that should come out I want to strike that shouldn't say corporation uh, any person who is found to have demolished constructed altered removed or changed the use of a building or structure <coughs> Without the benefit of building, electrical, plumbing, mechanical, or change in use permit shall, upon issuance of said permit, be assessed a fee of 200% of the regular permit fee. Again, it it's, doesn't add up to huge fees, but I think it's, it's important that, um, that we have something like that in place. And, I, and the town administrator is actually the one that brought it up to me last year. So uh, that's, that's what I'm here for. Which is it doesn't like it doesn't saying, we're not looking to abuse the not residents like you said there could be cases to where they're not even sure that they should have pulled a permit or whatever just to, to cover costs right and then and, and then like if you have let's say you have a licensed gas fitter they know they have to they know they have to make application for for a yeah. permit that's drilled into them every year at, at their continuing education so if they don't. Um, they that's that's a problem and they and they sh you know they should be they should 
pay a penalty for that. Right. You know what I mean? So, um, again, it doesn't negate the fact that, you know, potentially if the town had other civil action against them uh, and, and the town was trying to accrue, um, the town was trying to, you know, uh, pursue legal action, you know, other legal action for other civil penalties, th this doesn't, that doesn't make that go away. This is just, just for doing work with no permits. Mr. Chairman, yes, if the board is inclined um, to agree with Sam, which I do wholeheartedly, you could simply um, take the document that's typed and in front of any, if you look at it, see the word any, that's how it starts? Yep. You could put I move in front of that, and that could be your motion. I move that any person, yep. if you're inclined to agree with Sam. Hand me. Motion to accept said from the building inspector. How's that? Pretty simplistic. Yeah. Second. Second. Are we going to take a roll call? Yes. Okay. Can? Yes. Bob? Yes. Joe? Aye. Joe Simone? Aye. That's unanimous. Thank, Thank you, Sam. Sam. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate all your hard work that you've been doing. Next up is hiring of a cable operator. Uh, you want to talk to Sure, him? Mr. Chairman, sure. I met with uh, Diane today. Um, coincidentally, she was here at Town Hall on other business, and uh, I discussed with her the qualifications of the candidate. Um, 37 years with Comcast, a resident of town. Um, I suggested that, um, although Diane is known for her frugality, um, that um, Maybe 18 is better than 15, obviously, given the experience that he brings to the table. And Diane sent me an email uh, shortly thereafter and said the uh, job position called Cable Operator 2 will capture in that range $18 an hour. And uh, I'm making this recommendation, and Diane does not object. Okay. That, do I hear a motion? Uh, Move to hire yeah. Ted, Ted Quinn for the position of a part-time cable operator. Two. Two. Two at the rate of $18 an hour. Second. Second. You'd be seconded? I'll second. Yeah. Seconded by Joe. Roll call. Yep. Dan. Yes. Bob. Aye. Joe. Aye. Joe Simone. Aye. All right, thank you. Next up, we have fire department. Come on down, chief. Do you want Trish to do it for you? <laughs> I just, I know we had a couple of things, just wanted to know which one. Yeah, we do. Uh, this one's the requisition, and then the next one's the grant. Okay. So you just stay up there. Good evening, board. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> excuse me. That requisition is for one vent saw. Basically, what the vent saw is, uh, it's a chainsaw on steroids. High RPMs with a diamond uh, chain on it. It's designed to cut through uh, asphalt shingles and some alum uh, aluminum roofing. The, t the department has two of them. Both of them it's were purchased at the three. same time. Both of them are better than 20 years old. We sent both of them out last year for repairs because one wasn't starting, one was leaking oil. They were repaired, and at that time, the fire department was clearly told if they stop working, you can't buy pots for them anymore. 
they're out of service. Uh, a week before I sent that requisition, they went to one of them. Uh, all the oil just came out of the side of the engine all over the truck and the other one will not start. We reached back out to them and their recommendation was do not spend or attempt to spend money to fix them, just purchase new. So this is a whole different style. So instead of coming in front of the board for two, we only came in front of the board for one to see if this style, this new model, you could say, will work. Chief, what is the cost of going with the battery one? We do have the battery. Yeah. Uh, when the new truck was purchased, the decision was made by the truck committee to go all battery. Personally, the chain gas powered will cut through basically any roof compared to the gas power chainsaw. Once it binds down, it stops. The electric one, you mean? Yeah. Well, yeah. the electric. Okay. Uh, it stops. We actually have a, uh, we call them K-12s, uh, which is the big circular saw. Yep. That's also electric. We just purchased, uh, I think last year, a gas powered one because the battery will not cut it. So okay. simply put, the gas powered is a lot more powerful yeah. than the battery. A lot more powerful. It's reliable. And more reliable. Sure. Okay. Thank you. So you know we need one. Right. So I'm going to move to approve requisition 1079 FP to the fire supply company, Inc. or C. Inc. in the amount of $2,600 for the purchase of an emergency saw um, from account 4220033. Second. Motion made by Bob, seconded by Joe. Stan. Yes. Roll call. Yes. Oh, yes, sorry. Uh, Bob. Yes. Joe. Aye. Joe Simone. Aye. All right, thanks, Chief. What else Thank you got? You. Uh, the department, well, the town was awarded the uh, FEMA AFG grant for about $65,000 in change, respectfully asking for the board to accept the funds. Okay. We'll um, set up a public hearing to accept those funds on September 3rd at 6 p.m. And, Good. Jim, you're going to type that up? Um, so it's in a neat package. It's done, it's posted at the um, post office in Town Hall. Yeah. So we're ready to go at your next meeting. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, the, um, the amount that the chief referred to uh, also includes the match, but we should only be accepting the grant, which is 62000 Okay. So which um, is mine. And that's the way we're going to post it. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Chief, did you find out what it's going to take to fix those two pump trucks, the ones that failed? They actually, thank you for bringing it up. It was going in my monthly Sorry. report. Uh, they came down. We have not received the cost yet okay. for the repairs, but they have been repaired. Well, they have the, been repaired. They have okay. been repaired. Fantastic. So they're good for another year. Well, sure. <laughs> they're certified for certified. another year. Certified. Sure, I get it. But we'll probably cross this bridge. Again Perfect. next year. Again. It's a routine mm -hmm. thing. Okay. What's up, Joe? You got something? No, no, it's not. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Chief. Thank you, boy. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, health officer fees. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Currently, um, Mike Jorman, our health officer, receives no comp compensation other than septic inspections and he gets that money from the state. He does far more than that. And we Great. know recently from activity around town. Um, and um, uh, uh, we're proposing that um, we establish a, a flat rate in the amount of $50 per incident. And one incident may take multiple trips back and forth. So I would ask you to include in your motion that anything that takes three trips triggers a meeting between he and I, and then we evaluate as to whether or not it triggers another $50 based on your level of activity and the service being provided. 
But again, currently, he is not being paid. Sure. Sounds fair. Okay. With that being said, I'm going to move to approve paying our health officer a flat rate of $50 for each in incident he investigates. If the investigation requires more than three visits, he is to notify town administrative to arrange a meeting at which time a decision will be made as to whether the matter in question deserves a second $50 fee. Second. So, uh, friendly amendment to that, just I almost want to put another line on there that specifies this does not include <coughs> septic inspections. That's fair. That's right? fair. Yep. You go with that? Exclu yep. Excluding septic. Exactly. Yep. <coughs> good with that, Joe? I am. Okay. Roll call. Dan? Aye. Bob? Aye. Joe? Aye. Joe Simone? Aye. That's unanimous. All righty. Uh, and you, Robin or Jim, you guys will convey that to Mike. Yep. Robin, no. take care of it. Just, and obviously he's gonna bring you documentation of yep. what he's doing, not just, I was here. Um, yep. Okay, uh, next up, uh, Jack. Uh, Jack Kozak, I'm here representing the transfer station. Did everybody get the paperwork and have a chance to look at it tonight? From Northeast Resource Recovery? Yeah, from all of them. We, uh, Pete and I put together information from uh, Wilford Alloy, Grimmel Industries, and Harding Metals. Should have got it all today. Yes. Uh, just got we, it. We, we, got it late. we got it late. And I don't think we we've had enough time to digest that digest that information at this point in time. Yeah. That's my opinion anyway. We got it late, so we didn't. Okay. Get it all right. Well, chance. I'll just kind of give you a, you know quick overview. A, a quick yeah, as best I can because yep. we. Uh, first of all, last week I made a lot of telephone calls. Pete made calls. We sent pictures of the of the of the metal pile to to three, the three main ones. <clears throat> Wilford Agri, Grimley Industries, and Harding Meadows. In both of uh, uh, Wilford and uh, Grimmel, Grimmel and Harding, excuse me, told me on the phone that once they show that, those pictures to their manager, they'd get right back to me. Well, they never called back. So I think after they saw the pictures, it kind of scared them. It, and this is what I think and, I, and, and what I recommend the selectmen do. <clears throat> A lot of these companies, from what we can understand, uh, they, they basically want the metal separated, you know? Uh, and so they can come in, grab that metal, and they sell it on the open market. You know, the NRRA, there's two options. Uh, this NRRA is what we use for ordering signs and all that stuff for discounts. It helps transfer stations out. But they also have a vendor that comes in basically just like the guy we have now. But the nice part about it, they come in with their equipment, the trailer and uh, the equipment to go through the metal, met, uh, bend it and everything else, put it and take it off. The other companies leave a, uh, a, a container there that we have to pay at least on a monthly basis. So there's a cost there. I suggest the best thing for you, for you to do is to get these a representative from these three companies or four companies and talk to them because there's, there's so much that you know, on the conversation we have with them you know, there's in some of these places, these smaller uh, uh, transfer stations actually do that. They get all the metal, uh, the, uh, the aluminum here, uh, grade one steel, whatever, and put it in, and then the companies pick it up. We don't have that kind of manpower. Well, of course they do, because by doing that, it's not all dirty metal. And what happens is by yeah. separating it, they're getting the higher cost if that, it's strictly that, aluminum, that is correct. if it's yep. strictly cast iron or whatever, yeah. and they're gonna end up getting far less money put in their pockets if it's all dirty that metal. That is correct. And yeah. like you said, that's yeah. why they were horrified yeah. when they saw how it was just right. all screwed together yeah. yes. in that one big pile. Yeah, yeah. And if you know, you, gotta, you know, for ex just an example of some of the stuff, we go with 60-40. If we figure it's 60% metal, it goes in the metal pile. What the gentleman does when he takes it, I have no idea, but he's got a lot of stuff to deal with. You know, the, the current yep. owner, you know? It must take him weeks to separate all of it, so much of it. And you know, if we start, 
if we started saying to customers or people that come in, we're going to have to charge you for that, that might not be a good thing either. So those are the kind of things you've got to think about. But my recommendation is to get a representative from all three companies, come down and make a presentation of how they would work with us. Yeah? And uh, any other questions? I know you didn't, uh, I, I'm not sure what else. We, we called several times, even today. Uh, the only company that called us back was, uh, um, let me see, I think it was uh, Grimmel and they're coming, the guys coming down tomorrow, to, for, uh, Thursday. The other two never called me back, and I called at least a half a dozen times, leaving a message. Yep. And they know who I am because I made contact with them before. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and again, like you said, the stipulation of them leasing the roll-off units to put yep. the metals in, so they're yep. going to be receiving money from that. Yeah. And it makes their job a lot easier and quicker for them, just like they do our trash. They come in. Yeah. They hook up the container, put it on the back of the roll-off. And away they go. Yes. So it's a lot less time consuming mm -hmm. when it's already all is said and done. Yeah. One, one of the companies that from NRRA, I can't get a name, I someplace, and what they do, they come in just like the fellow that does it now, but they come in the day they pick it up. They come in with all their equipment, they have a, a, a container to carry it, and they're out. They take them. So there's a big savings there without having to rent the, the, uh, right. the, the pack of buildings, you know? Right. Yeah. So we'll see what he what NRA says. Yeah, that's that's what they they have two companies. One that basically does it just like the other ones, where you have to put the metal in different locations. Or this fellow here that uh, um, comes in with all the all the gear to get rid of it right there and there. Yeah. Sure. I mean, depending on what they're charging for lease on the boxes, we could be looking at almost uh, a wash as far yeah. as getting rid of the metal. Yes. Yeah. For what they would charge and how long it takes. Yeah to fill those mm -hmm. up for them to come pick them up yeah. to make it worthwhile to pick them up to begin yeah. with. And then by the time, like I said, they cash out what would be coming to us, they deduct it off the bill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we could end up not getting anything. That is, that is absolutely correct. That's why when Pete and I looked at it, we looked at the fellow the NRA gave us that he basically does the same thing that the gentleman does now. But he comes in with his equipment that day, fills it up, and he's out of there. There's no leaving of containers. It's something to think about. The final decision is going to be gentlemen. But if you look at the, we try to do a gross income on, on all the steps that's in the, in the paperwork. So when you get a chance to look at it, you know, maybe there'll yeah. be some more questions. But I really think you have to have the group down. And, it, and I think what happened was when we sent the pictures out, in fact, I took the pictures and sent them. I think they were in shock when they looked at the transfer. I, I did. I walked all around and I took several pictures and I sent every one of them to them. And they never cut back to me, no, because they probably realized that the, they couldn't work. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just guessing, you know. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, they, uh, I would imagine that a lot of them don't have, like you were talking about, the that huge tractor trailer mm -hmm. that the other gentleman was using. Yeah. And again, these other companies want to just put roll-off boxes yeah. in mm -hmm. because they have the roll-off um, roll-off trucks yeah. that are accessible, right. doing all their work, yeah. and they're not using tractor trailer guys yeah. so for them having the roll-off boxes is, is for, for them the best suitable yes. option yeah it, I, I don't know how we'd ever be able to um, if they if they demand that the aluminum go here copper goes here god i i, I mean i'm down we're all down there all the time if if copper comes in at five or ten percent of what's in there i'd be shocked you know yeah. it, it, it's probably little pieces i very seldom see any copper in there other than if you don't consider the wires that people would have to strip and so forth there's electrical wiring that's in there all the time and i'm not sure if they would even accept that because it's it's still coated with rubber or whatever you know yeah 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 any further questions i'd be glad to try to answer anything that you can throw at me so you know I have, I have a question that doesn't concern the metal pile at, <coughs> at this point, and that's about, I talked with Pete. Pete said that they ordered um, the cardboard roll-off, the compactor. Mm -hmm. um, it's broken, waiting on a part. Right, yep. It's been it, over a week. It's back Has ordered. he made another call to find out what's going on with he the said part? He called, called us today, it's on back order. What does that mean to you? A week, two weeks, I don't know. Man, it's 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 brutal with not having the cardboard. Did we, he ask them if they had another compactor that they could swap out while they're waiting for that for us to use? Nothing. 
Okay. So is why that, don't we check that, into yeah. that? Yeah. Is that ours or theirs? It's theirs, yeah. Then everything is theirs? Because I know on the other thing, some of it's no, ours. The, the, everything, the, the, the container and the package. The containers the are there, the it's just yeah. the chutes are ours. Right. Do, do we pay for something that doesn't work? Right. No, so no. We we're, don't we're, no. We're not paying for something that doesn't work, but I believe their lease says within 24 hours. So yeah. I believe you're correct. You yeah. might want to look at that. So and we should be calling them up to say we can't be throwing all our cardboard out, you need to swap this out and right. give us a working one till you get this repaired and then you can swap it back if you'd like. We'll do that tomorrow. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, because they, they, it's in their lease, it's 24 hours. So, yep. I mean, we're not. I was there with the guy two Fridays ago for four hours. He's a very nice guy, he just took all the parts that were necessary to fix it. While I was there, I mean, next time he called it all in, what he needed and so forth. And yeah. yeah. No, they can swap yeah, it. and I, I think we're getting passed by on this that, like I said, we need to call them up and tell them we want a functioning um, compact unit that we can use for cardboard because it's been well over a week, almost two yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And tell them we want it immediately, please. So where's the cardboard going now? Trash. 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 Oh. Trash. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's broken down before, minor stuff, you know, it's fixed sure. the other day. Sure, right. And that's why I asked if it was yeah. this was an us thing or a them yeah, thing. This but is, this is the first time. That yeah, down. it just needs to be correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are all the cans still going to the Boy Scouts? Pardon? The cans? Can't the Boy Scouts do the that's what I mean. They, they're still doing that? Yes. They're okay. They are, yeah, yeah. I saw the gentleman there not too long ago on a windy day trying oh, yeah, to pick he, them you know, up. When I was a Boy Scout leader and so forth with Paul, you know, we did the same thing. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. He's still doing it. You know? Yeah. He's a he's a lifetime scout. God bless him. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, if I think the thing's getting full, I give Paul a call. He <laughs> says thanks. You know? Well, it is. It's you know, the, the turn systems used to be you know you pick four people, fathers and sons to go down there. Of course, pick them, and you'd have this Sunday or Saturday, you know, and swap around if you you know, if you're lucky if he gets anything. Yeah. So Paul is up there most of the time. By himself. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think that's it. You no, got anything? Uh, 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 Jim, do you have any questions? Uh, no, but I did learn today that um, Northeast Resource Recovery Association is a non nonprofit. Yes. And it, they form a consortium of a number of communities, mm -hmm. but they offer services beyond removal or arranging for removal. They'll actually come in and do an analysis of how your transfer station flows yeah. mm -hmm. sure. in terms of where things go. And I wonder if we might want to take advantage of, of having them come out and take a look. Um, he's sending material out tomorrow to us, oh, and, I'll, and, and I'll drive it down to you, Jack, so that you can have it. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. All right. But after you, after you guys read this information over, I'm sure you'll have more questions. Yeah. And, you know, talk, just have a meeting tonight just to discuss these things. But I really think you need to get the representative down here and say, what do you offer and how do we work on these things? You know? But my concern is that the, uh, there's no way in hell we could keep the, keep the separate metal down there with the amount of staff we have. <coughs> and one of the, uh, one of the companies has a, they do their own crushing at that particular location because they have mm -hmm. enough manpower and he distributes it in the correct containers. You know? Yeah. Right. Good. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Gentlemen. That's it. Um, how are we doing yeah. with the um, the clothes bins? The what? The clothes bins, the donation bins. Yeah. Oh, the three, the three that we still have there the, from the last company. Have we heard from them at all? Jim knows. How many times have you called? Because they owe us some money. That's why we moved them over there so that they couldn't come in and take. Oh, I know. Well, they that got was what them. I told them to do. Yeah. yeah. I told them just move them yeah. and get the Make new ones. new company. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah what fine. we probably should do is just write them a letter and say we're going to uh, throw them in the metal pile. <coughs> whatever the money you owe us, and we can sell it. You know? Put them in the metal pile. Right. Well, we, we, I was, was going to say that. Picking up our clothing right now, the gentleman told me that they have a supply. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. Right. Joe Simone has his hand up. Sure. Yes, I'd, li I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to add that uh, I think uh, I think we should act upon that metal power right away and contact that uh, 
uh, resource recovery to get somebody in there and get that junk out of there right now because it's awfully unsightly. I get it, Joe. I, I think I'm going to make a motion. That, probably getting higher. Yeah, I know it's getting higher. I'm going to make a uh, motion, and if they agree, we'll go forward with that. But I'm going to make a motion to allow the uh, town administrator to decide in this instance because I don't want to I don't want to wait for another meeting um, no. what is best for the town of Newton with the scrap metal pile uh, I'll second that thank you Joe I just I, I don't want to wait for another meeting as right. Joe said the no, pile no, no. is getting way too big and it needs to be handled um, he's obviously uh, if it's anything of a, a contract or anything like that that's obviously going to come in front of the board but as far as in the interim, you have something. Let's let him take the ball and run with it and figure it out. Um, well, I have, I have a question for, for Jack, and pardon my ignorance, Jack. Companies come in, and sometimes the, the load is so large that they need a cherry pick to grab the stuff and sure. put it That's in the grapple. Yeah. What are the local capabilities of you and the staff that we currently have there in terms of maintaining? Any any type of pile down there. Maintaining stuff down there. Yeah. In fact, what Pete and I have been working on at the boat the last couple of weeks off and on, we had a couple of broken hoses up the yard of the class and you and I did. And then the air go down while we're all full of grease. <laughs> and you know, it's gotta be fixed. So we had and it's a pain in the neck to the boat and not none of us are engineers or or know enough, but Pete knows more than me about mechanical stuff, so we're able to get it there and put it out of it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, no. and, and is yeah. there, is he, is there any hesitancy on the part of Pete and in his absence you about spending money to fix things to keep the engine running? Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know if there's any money in the budget, but I, I was told Pete he's got a thousand dollars even with the last machine. Every year he spends a thousand bucks to get it maintained and to keep it up. So it is an awful lot for you. When uh, we have a family that passed away, we put parts of the car together. So there, there's definitely money in the budget for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. I know Pete's lot of the much more possible to the voter. He got some back and we fixed what we could with the and They were back on the Sure. Okay. I, I just fear that there's a mindset, not necessarily at the transfer station, but across the town, that department heads are uh, hesitant to spend money to fix things and things sit idle. Uh, based on past practices, like don't spend money after October. Yeah, uh, th that has to stop because you're losing PMs for three a quarter of the year, um, and then you end up starting January with a broken machine. So um, I think everybody's starting to catch on that we want things fixed in a timely manner so that our equipment can be used as soon as possible, rather than sitting dormant waiting for somebody to give the blessing to spend 200 bucks. Sure. Just, you yeah. can't be like that again. Do we have a preventative maintenance schedule on this equipment? Um, no. So no, we just no. able to have, let you have that and do that, and then that keeps the machine going. It, you know, you would think that when you, we buy a new piece of equipment, I think so, I mean, probably be in the house, it would get a manual. Well, yeah, 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 I don't know how, I don't know how new that Kubota is, but I'm sure I can uh, doubt well, that, that Kubota was, we got that to go over that fellow that was running the dog fighting. How many years ago was that? <laughs> I'm sure I can figure out what it is and print out a PM maintenance for yeah. it so you guys can have it. We'll laminate it and put it on the wall. <laughs> we have a motion on the floor, right? Yes, we do, Joe. We were just having a discussion. Um, all right. With that said, Robin, will you call the roll? Dan. Aye. Bob. Aye. Joe. Aye. Joe Simone. And when you're down with the line of contact name of the three companies, we'll provide that with telephone numbers so we'll give it to the Robert and to Jim. Yep. Yep. Am I all set? Yep. You're good. Thanks a lot, Jack. Well, I do. Second Joe. Joe. Joe on the Zoom. Thank you.
All right. Did that, did that. Uh, Trish. Why don't you uh, come on up? Breakouts. I'm bringing this up because coming up in a couple weeks, September 10th is election day. Please, from 8 to 8 at the fire station, if you are sick, wear a mask. We're going to provide masks, um, sanitize stations. But last year, after election, we had an unbelievable outbreak. A lot of our staff got sick because people came without mask protection. So I'm reminding you. Again, and if the town clerk, I don't know if Mary Jo's on, also don't forget to bring a photo ID. But more importantly, or not equally as important, is please, if you're sick, we want you to vote, but protect yourself, and we will provide PPE if you need it. That's number one. Also during elections, we'll provide a sign-up table for our alert system. It, we have more and more people that are signing up, but it's gonna keep the residents informed when we've got an emergency, if we've got road closures, if we've got power failures, um, remember if you put your cell phone along with your landline, you might lose your landline during a power failure, but I can communicate with you if you've got a cell phone. You also can give um, family members that maybe don't live in town that would also get the alert so they would realize their relative in town might be without power. Um, also on that note, with um, things like road closures. Um, if our road agent was here, he would probably tell you, but I'm gonna tell you also, starting tomorrow and the next day, so the 21st and the 22nd, New Boston Road will be closed um, on, as a throughway to 125 to Kingston. You can get as far as number 21, New Boston Road. Uh, that's for the next two days. We've got signs. Our message board is on our end, and Kingston has put a sign on their end. And for you millions of people in TV land, remember, you should pay attention to these unbelievable, exciting meetings because now, see, you won't go out of the way <laughs> when you go on New Boston Road. So New Boston Road, I've talked about COVID alert. Uh, on, the, on the last note, we have, the selectmen have been talking and listening to people about solar issues and solar panels. I wanted to toss this out there because it's kind of exciting. You may have heard, I don't know if it's a rumor, if you may have heard it as a rumor, but this is fact. The town of Kingston, New Hampshire is gonna be the first site in the state of New Hampshire where a power company, which is Unitil, is gonna set up a solar farm. They've got 36 acres on Toll Road. It's gonna provide 1,200 residences about with power. And the town buildings are gonna benefit from it. So I'm throwing this out because you know we've been talking about it. So now I've kind of jumped on the bandwagon to see if we can get involved maybe down the road. This is the first one. They said it'll be ready next year, but it's kind of exciting. So I wanted to let you know that I'm kind of on top of it and I'll keep you posted. And I think that's it, unless Thank I have you, questions. Thank you. Okay? Thanks, Trish. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Jack, I just thought of this while you're here. Did you know? I just thought of this while you're here. Did you, were you guys aware about the cybersecurity training? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, but. Were you guys aware down at the transfer station for the cybersecurity training that's happening? No, I was aware of that. Okay, well, it's on the 17th, and we need a department person from each department there, just one? The 17th of this month? Yeah. Uh, no, September. 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 September 10 to 11.30. It'll be at the fire station. 10 to 11.30. Pete RSVP. Pete did RSVP? Yes. All right, I was just so checking because okay. Jack was standing in front of me and I wanted to make sure we were going to have the, every department. Um, yeah, one representative. That's all. <laughs> Pete's going, we're good. Uh, I'll be there. Oh, all right. Thank you. September 17th from 10 to 11.30. You got yeah. it. As long as I don't like to sit next to the fire chief, I'll be like, I'm right on after. <laughs> oh, he's so gay. Like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll host it if it's not bad. Yeah, we'll host it. Uh, okay. Mike, do you have anything? You're good? Okay. Uh, with that being said, I guess. Uh, 
Jim, do you have anything that you want to hit? No, sir. Okay. Um, oh, the communications tower, just so everybody knows, we should be getting the lease back from the legal department this week, so probably the next meeting we will set the uh, public hearing, a uh, public uh, meeting for that. Um, I guess I would point out that there are t-shirts for sale. They're $15. Oh. They're Pac-Man yellow. They're very attractive. Safety yellow. Safety yellow. Um, and the proceeds go to the 275. 275. Okay. Size is up to two itself. Yes. Fifteen dollars a piece. All right. With that said, let's go into uh, manifest. All right. I move to approve the payroll manifest in the amount of sixty-four thousand one hundred sixty-three dollars and sixty-three cents for pay period July twenty-eighth through August tenth, twenty twenty-four. With a pay date of August 15th, 2024, and include zero dollars in opera costs. Second. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Bob. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Just so the public knows, Joe Samoe has dropped off. That's why we're able to not have to do roll call. Three zero. I move to approve the payroll manifest in the amount of $1,071.60 for pay period July 28th through August 10th, 2024. For the pay date of August 16th, 2024, payment includes zero dollars in after cost. Second, motion made by Joe, seconded by Bob. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. I move to approve the manifest in the amount of 161,000. <laughs> that number's not right. Yeah. There's an extra digit in there. All I right. don't know which one to drop off. Um, Do you? No, not. Why don't we keep going and you can sneak downstairs and see Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. I move to approve the withdrawal of $6,084.60 from the cable community revolving account with the pay date of August 7. Payments include $5,366 in R1 network for IT services and $718.60 to Hewlett Packard. Second. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Bob. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. I move to approve a withdrawal in the amount of 373500 from the emergency management operations account with the pay date of August 7, 2024. Payment is to Greenwood Emergency Vehicles for the purchase of a new ambulance. Second. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Bob. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. I move to approve a withdrawal in the amount of $1,047.55 from the police special detail with the pay date of August 7, 2024. Payment is to the state of New Hampshire for fuel. Second. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Bob. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. I move to approve a withdrawal in the amount of $10,000 from the town anniversary revolving fund with a pay date of August 7, 2024. Payment is to American Thunder Fireworks, Inc. Second. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Bob. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. I move to approve withdrawal in the amount of $40,000 from the ambulance service revolving account with the pay date of August 7, 2024. Payment is to the town treasurer to deposit for partial payment of new ambulance. Second. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Bob. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. I move to approve vendor manifest in the amount of $1,277,169.43 with a pay date of August 13, 2024. Payment includes $1,258,596 to Sanborn Regional School District and $11,465 to Municipal Resource Inc. for staffing services. Second. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Bob. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. I move to approve vendor manifest in the amount of $48.25 for the pay date of August 13, 2024. Payment is to the State of New Hampshire criminal records for employment verification. Second. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Bob. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. I move to approve vendor manifest in the amount of $1,083.35 for the pay date of August 13, 2024. Payment is to Comcast in the amount of of $691.85 and to Neptune uniform and equipment for police uniforms. Second. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Bob. All in favor? Aye. 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 You have that uh, 
So it's 161, 370, 39. So it's 191. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Okay. I move to approve vendor manifest in the amount of $161,370.39 with a pay date of August 7th, 2024. Payment includes $80,000 to the town treasurer for deposit as partial payment for ambulance and $25,000 to deposit for partial payment to purchase the new striker stretcher for the ambulance. Second. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Bob. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Move to approve and accept the public meeting minutes dated August 6, 2024, as written. Second. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Bob. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Move to approve and accept the non public meeting minutes dated August 6, 2024, as written. Second. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Bob. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. All right. New business. Anybody got anything? I'm um, just going to reiterate. Um, what Trish was, uh, had said, the primary for the state elections, September 10th. Please vote. If we don't vote, then we got no right to write. It's that simple. Okay. Joe, you got any uh, limericks or rhymes you want to read them out? I'm good. Uh, I am good as well. Actually, do you, what's anything new with the planning board? Uh, we're just looking to um, get it put in for another grant about the watersheds, and that'll further help uh, with the work that we've been doing for the um, not the C CPI, but the um, the capital. CFP. No, not the CFP. Oh, right. Let's have a senior. That's okay. You're entitled. <laughs> I know I said it only talked. I know, right, <laughs> Trash? That's all right. This is actually a thank you from Pat and Meadows. We had their cookout last week. Thank you to the Recreation Committee and the Board of Selectmen. They had an unbelievable time and they said to please thank the town. They had the ice cream chuck. We had the, you know, it sounded like the, uh, the hot dog cart and uh, <laughs> tropical music, and they had party favors. They had a wonderful time, and they did say thank you, thank you. Awesome, thank you. Glad they enjoyed themselves. All right, with that said, I will With that entertain. said, I am going to make a motion to go into um, non-public session under RSA 91-A. Colon three, C reputation and B compensation and then D consideration of acquisition, sale or lease or personal property. Hold on, did you seriously just go up as he was making this motion? <laughs> I'm not talking about the motion. I'm waiting. Well, well no, this, motion for discussion, I this is the, as soon as we're done, we're going into non-public. No, but I have to have what Trish just said. This is important. Okay, we'll pause on this. We'll Thank table you. this. Go Thank ahead. You. Thank you. Trish just went up there and thanked the town for Parker Meadows. I want to bring it to everybody's attention. She's the only one that went there to do the work for the town. Well, Pat was there. Pat was there. Pat was there. Okay, but it was like, you know, I'm just, you know, it's a nice long participation, that's all. Did Trish, you <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And Pat, Pat Trish. thank you. Okay. Well, very <laughs> much. It's in the deep water. All right, back to our motion. That is a roll call vote. Bob? Aye. Joe? Aye. Dan is an aye. We were adjourned and going to non-public.